Hello and welcome guys, this is Rara Likes Games and today I wanted to talk to you about some of the problems I think are in Albion Online. This video is about Albion Online's world design, so if you are interested in videos of similar topic, please consider liking and subscribing. Without any further delay, let us begin. Number 1. The world feels too empty. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't mean it in a sense that the world feels empty because it's a dying game or anything. What I mean is, as you travel and explore around the world, you realize even though it's a vast open world, it's mostly just an empty, flat world. There are no actual structures or anything like that in the entire map. By structures, I mean things like uh, buildings, bridges, or even fully fleshed enemy cans, or even naturally generated structures like uh, flower fields, bushes, even hills, and other things. Now, I know there are structures like these in game, but they are way too few and far between. And most of the world is just wide open plains with nothing to see or explore. While I understand that large structures cannot be added everywhere, but even then, there are just a handful of them in the entire game. What I believe is the best solution for this problem is to add slightly bigger structures to every few tiles and use smaller structures like bridges, wells, old dilapidated houses, small worn out encampments, flower field, etc. To make the world feel a bit more interesting and lively. As a bonus, these structures can make some great spots for PvP and Zerg vs Zerg, as they can act like choke points and traps, adding an extra layer of strategy in the open world PvP. Point number two: There are far too many repeated resources like leaks, and in some cases, even entire tiles are repeated. I understand having a smaller team makes it difficult for Sandbox to make everything to be unique but even then, the way they even copied entire tiles does make you wonder why Sandbox is even pushing new world expanding updates when they haven't even made some of new and unique tiles for them. I believe the best thing to do for Sandbox would be to stop trying to expand the world by adding more tiles and instead make the tiles that are already there feel more unique by improving their map design which would end up improving the overall feel of the game. Number 3. Map placements make no sense. In Albion, most overworld map placement feels really random as if they are placed there just because someone felt like and not because they belong there. While it's not much of a problem for resource, resource mobs only being an issue when carnivorous animals are placed next to herbivores. But for other hostile mobs, their placement is completely random and they are not placed to protect anything or are in any structures that might belong to them, but instead they are placed just to be a complete nuisance to people gathering or traveling. Similar to point number one, this can be solved by adding structures specifically for these mobs and making it more like these mobs are there for a reason and removing them from unnecessary spots where they do not, nothing more than annoy people as the way it is right now. These mobs are not even worth killing for the fame and loot as literally any other method of getting fame and loot is better than this. At least if these mobs were placed inside one structure, it might make killing them a bit more effective for getting fame. Number 4. There are only 5 biomes in the game. While having only 5 biomes is not necessarily a problem, but with the lack of tile diversity and repeated asset, it starts to become extremely boring. As if you have seen one tile of any biome, you have seen them all. 
Even the color choice for these biomes is really bad. Every biome is filled with bland and dull colors. The forest and the swamp are filled with depressing shades of green. The mountain biome is less of a mountain biome and more of a snow fields biome. With the bright white even irritating the eyes sometimes. The white snow in this biome is so bright that it becomes near impossible to see the indication circle for your mounts. So you can even mistakenly walk out of the range without even noticing, which can put you at great risk when you are out in the red and black zones. In step, most animals are colored the same as the crown, which doesn't help it look any better. The highlands are slightly better for one the color is not as dull as the other biomes with some hills and land having the exposed rock texture definitely adds to the color scheme of this biome. Wild Sandbox has announced that they plan on fixing it but I highly doubt they will do anything more than just slight touch ups to the biomes. To fix this there are a few things sandbox can do first just change the colors from the current dull and bland color scheme to a bit more vibrant and lively ones i believe this is the approach sandbox plans on me taking for their next big update second adding different colored structures to the biome this would add some much needed color diversity to the tiles without changing the base color of the biomes that much. And third, the tile near the border of two biomes can have a transitional effect like adding trees covered in a bit of snow as we move from forest biome to the mountain biomes. We could also start seeing things like frozen lake. This would make moving between the biomes a bit smoother instead of the normal where the environment drastically changes between two adjacent tiles and it would add variety to the tiles as well. Point number five, the minimap is too hard to read. While this point is about minimap and not the world, it is closely related to your experience in the world nonetheless. While the main map of Albion Online is really good as it shows all the major roads and other points of interest. Same cannot be said about the game's minimap as it is filled with too much info which is really hard to see without either turning it in full screen or zooming in a lot. And as you may know this is not always an option when you are in red and black zones getting chased by like 20 people. This is especially bad when you are trying to avoid cankers as it is too hard to see the main path on the minimap which might end up with you getting cornered and if you try to zoom in on the map it's nearly impossible to tell which direction the exit to the tile is in. To make the minimap more useful the main roads should be highlighted on the minimap so we don't have to constantly zoom in to see the roads. The exit should be highlighted in such a way that we can see the direction of the exit even when we are zoomed in on the map so that even if we are zoomed in we can tell exactly which direction we have to go to the get to the exit of the map. Another thing that can be done is to make the exit marker tell us which tile it goes to when we hover over it on the minimap. This would make it so that we don't need to open the world map so often, making the overall world traveling experience much smoother. Now this is it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe.